Hey folks, this is Frank the Pest Geek. I'm going to be talking to you about the challenges that we're having with townhomes here in South Florida, where this is one continuous structure with divisions. And the problem that we have with townhomes is that in townhomes, they're usually HOAs. And the, the owners own the interior walls where it's like almost like a condominium where the external walls uh, are all joined together. And the attics, people think where well, our attic is separated. Well, attics aren't sealed. If you get roaches and rodents up in your attic, um, they're going to move across the units. And what we're finding is that on a lot of these units have a deficiency in one end of the building. Everybody pays for it. But yet the HOA is responsible for the common areas. The individual owners are responsible for their individual unit and what you end up with is that nobody's really responsible so what we're seeing is like with rats right now we're getting a ton of call with rats and what happens with rats rats uh because of covid uh restaurants and food handling places closed down and they closed down for two to three months in some cases um and those rats moved out because rats are territorial. And so they moved out into the suburbs. And where I was getting one call a week, we're getting three to five calls a day now on rats. And it's because of these problems. The majority of places where behind me, you see these townhomes behind me uh, all over the place. This is a massive uh, community. And you can see um, that there's just townhomes everywhere. There's like 20 of these in this area. And you've got lake, like right over here. I'm gonna show you behind me. There's water, there's, there's, look at this. All these areas where rats are gonna to like to be. It's lakefront property. Water is, is available everywhere. Um, you're gonna get a tremendous problem with these rodents. And the way we're they're getting in is through the air conditioning conduit uh, going up into the attic where it hasn't been sealed. Let me get into uh, the sun so you can see me better, where they, the air conditioning people never sealed that. And the ads are just walking. So if you've got 10 units and rats are just going up those air conditioning into the attics, trying to knock down the population. Here is, look what they've done. Let me show you. They got rodent stations out here, right? Well, these rodent stations aren't approved for outdoor because a child or an animal can turn these over. And if the bait gets loose in there, which it will, if the heat gets to it, the bait blocks will get cut. Um, then that rodent uh, station can, the bait can fall out and an animal can eat it or a child can play with it. So you got an enormous amount of issues with people desperate trying to solve these problems and not doing it correctly. And what we need to do is show you how to do a lot of this correctly. So I'm gonna be putting out a couple of videos, check them out. Um, we're gonna be putting links to them in this video on how we actually solve a lot of these problems with different methods because this is the last thing you want is to, with a rodenticide, to put out rodent bait or rodent poison outside or throw it into your attic uh, because you're desperate to solve these problems. Then the rats die inside the structure and then you have to tear open a wall or how are you gonna hunt it down and find it if it went into your neighbor's uh, attic uh, with one of these problems. And all of a sudden the, it, you put the bait up in your attic and then it died in somebody else's, you know, three doors down. And now the stench is, is unbelievable. Uh, because of this or you threw rodenticide out in the yard uh, to kill all the rodents because you're seeing them running around in your yard and all of a sudden these rodents are eating all of this and dying everywhere or and other animals are picking them up if you're using second generation rodenticides this is not the right thing to do uh, because with second generation rodenticide there's secondary poisoning a dog eats it and a dog can get poisoned uh, because he ate the dead rat that died from it so a lot of things are going on because people are just desperate and they're going insane. Like we're getting, we've already gotten four calls this morning and it's not even 11 o'clock here yet uh, because of this. So I thought I'd do a video 
and, and help you guys understand. You need to understand how rodents behave. You need to understand how rodenticides work. You need to understand how trapping really works. We get a call. This isn't going to get solved in, you know, one visit and in, and in three days. Chances are that this is going to take several weeks to solve. Uh, and especially in a community where we're talking about several a months to bring down those populations in an HOA like this, where we got to install about three to five um, rodent stations outside uh, every 30 to 50 feet and then around the shrub areas. So in a community like this, we're installing 50 to 75 rodent stations. Um, and that is several thousand dollars for the association to, and then management of those stations throughout the association because if one owner decides he's not going to do it and he doesn't want to pay for the rodent station, it has to be built into the association price. So these are all the challenges that we're facing and hopefully this helps you understand a little bit about how we're dealing with this rodent problem explosion in Miami. This is Frank the Pesky wishing you a spectacular day.